Hey, how are you guys? So recently I was trying to set up an unattended robot on a virtual machine in UiPath and UiPath Orchestrator and I found some pieces of documentation, I found some video tutorials, but some of them, including the documentation, were outdated. So there was just piece of the whole thing. So I decided to create this video to show you how to set it up and also tell you something around it, something that may be useful to understand Orchestrator. My name is Roman, this is RPF Fridays session number 26, and I'm from Robot ICT, a company from Czech Republic. I'm an RPA developer, and in spare time, I'm doing this video, so if you would like it, I would appreciate if you can subscribe to our channel, or at least give a like. And of course, if you need to help with any of your automation projects, let me know. So in this video, I will show you the full setup of unattended robot using UiPath Orchestrator in cloud. I will show you how to install unattended robot service on a virtual machine, how to create a robot user account in Automation Cloud, how to create a machine template, how to connect all this together, so connect the assistant to the machine, and how to assign a robot user account to tenant and to folder. I will also meanwhile explain a little bit about how tenants work, folders, maybe licenses and robot users. So let's start with some uh, intro. And I want to say for those who already know Orchestrator and you know how it works and how it's structured, you can skip the beginning or you can download cheat sheet from the first link in the video description and just see the step-by-step know-how. So Orchestrator is a really nice tool to deploy and manage your automation, your processes on robots. And I have to say it's really powerful. Uh, yet it start to be, it's getting much more complex. That also makes it sometimes complicated and confusing to use. And also every quarter of a year, there is an update and something major change. So it's kind of hard to keep a track on all the changes in Orchestrator. But actually now I feel that Orchestrator is quite major and can fit also small companies, also big enterprises. And that's the reason why I want to do this video also. First, I want to talk a little bit about licenses. UiPath licensing model is incredibly complicated. I have no idea why, but don't worry. The basics are that you have a licensing plan, for example, community or enterprise, to give you a number of some licenses. And each license is for something else and will allow you to do something else. For example, there are user licenses, as you can see, and there are robots and services licenses. Some of the licenses are attached to some accounts, some people, some users, some of them to robots. Most of them are in certain, in some way floating. There is much more about it but I just wanted to do a little intro and continue with licenses uh, in my next example. This is example setup of how a structure of orchestrator can look like. So on the very top, there is a login to cloud.uipath.com. After you log in using your account, you may be part of more than one organization. When you register your community account, for example, you are creating a name of your organization. It doesn't have to be a real organization, but it's called organization. Once you become part of another organization, you are being invited with your account to some other orchestrator, for example, as an RPA uh, consultant. Then you can choose while you log in which organization you want to enter. And then you get to this organization's automation cloud. A license plan that I was talking about before is connected with organizations. So each organization can have different license plan. Within an organization, you can create multiple tenants with the community plan, only one. But what are the tenants good for? The tenants are here to create layers, or you can call it to scale things. In my example, I have three layers, development, testing, and production. I believe this is a typical setup of how the tenants will be used, how to create layers. And of course, for each layer, you can put a different setup to allow different people to do different things and, you know, to just in general manage the access over it. Here we have a development tenant where devs can play around and a testing layer that is using some virtual machines to test the automation on a dummy data and then a layer called production where the robots are working with the production data and uh, after they are being tested in a testing layer. So it's a little bit like a life cycle development testing production. And then within each of the tenant, you can create folders. I mean, you don't have to, you can have just one folder for all the robots or for all the processes, let's say. But imagine you have tens or maybe hundreds of robots. It's a big organization. It's quite nice 
to differentiate, for example, in my example, between some departments. Of course, it's up to you how you will use your folders, like how you use your folders on your computer. The cool thing is that you can assign machines and users and robot users to the folders. So you can have, for example, some dedicated machines for one department, another dedicated machines for robots from another department. So you can keep some structure if you want. So now just simple example how it works with the licenses. Let's omit now that there are different kind of licenses. And let's just say that organization A has four licenses. Let's don't care now about if there are user licenses, robot, if they are production or not, four licenses, right? And in the automation cloud setup, you can assign to each of the tenant a number of licenses as you wish. Of course, you cannot exceed your budget of licenses. So let's say we assigned one license to development, one to testing, and one, uh, two to production. Later, I will show you how to do it. And later also, I will show you how a machine can have a number of licenses that it can actually eat from that budget. So then when we have a machine in a production environment or production tenant, the machine can use this license to run the automation. And of course, if there are more machines and we have available licenses for them, there could be more robots running at the same time. There could be more robots than licenses, meaning that simultaneously only, let's say, two machines will execute. And if you want to run something else, it will have to wait until license will be released again. So the license is being used and the license is released. That's actually quite a cool thing about these licenses. So that was quick intro about it. I just wanted to show you this chart and maybe it will help you to understand how the orchestrator things work. Because likewise, the licenses, the other things are working in a similar way, like users, roles, or some access rights. So let's move on to the real stuff and I will show you how to do the setup. So I'm going to sign into the UiPath cloud with my credentials. And as I was talking about before, I'm part of three organizations and I can choose now the organization which I want. So this one. So maybe a little bit back to the licenses. If you go to admin here and you check licenses, you can see the budget of licenses you have, those that are available for different kind of licenses and the users licenses and the robots and services licenses that I was showing before. And also there a little bit on the bottom, there are license allocation to tenants, where you can see what license is allocated to each tenant. You can change this here, if you wish. So make sure there are enough licenses for your tenant. Let's open orchestrator of the desired tenant. So I go to orchestrator. I want to create a new machine at production tenant. So I'm at the right place. If I wouldn't be, then I can switch here. And I will go to tenant, machines, add machine. And now you have this uh, many of options. And in my video, I will use the machine template, the very first one. Some of them are uh, something new for me still. And standard machine is already legacy. So machine template, that's where to go. Call the template name as you wish. I will call it production machines. And I mean, they call it template, but it's maybe rather a group. So you can assign more, but not physical, but more virtual machines to this template. And this will be actually beneficial if you will then run, let's say, high scale aut automation. We have to say to use by this machine or to allow to use one uh, production unattended uh, license. And these are other things that you can set up like to automatically update the binaries or to do only set up a machine for foreground or background processes and other things. Let's click provision. So now our machine template is ready and we will connect the machine. So the next step would be to go to a virtual machine or you can do what I just did now also in a browser, the virtual machine and install UiPath. You can download UiPath installation from the first page of UiPath Cloud. Here, Download Studio or this big button, Download UiPath Studio, and you will get an MSI package. So just run it on a machine where there is no UiPath installed, of course. And let's do the setup. On the first page, we want to select Custom because we are advanced users. Let's accept the license agreement 
and click configure. And on the next screen, of course, what you want to do is to select unattended robot. There are some advanced settings like to also install the studio or also install some of the extension right away, but I will just go ahead and hit install. And now it will install. One eternity later. It's finally done. So it's completed and I can go and launch the UI Path Assistant. It's right there in the tray, so I'll open it. It looks like that. By the way, did you know that with UiPath Assistant now, there is a tool called Task Capture that can help you to document your processes. It's actually quite neat tool with an export to uh, create a documentation. So how to set up Assistant, how to connect these two things together, how to connect Orchestrator with the Assistant. That's pretty easy. So I need to go back to my Orchestrator. That's the first thing. Check that I'm at production. I'll go to tenant machines. Here are my production machines. Here's the orchestrator. Here's the assistant. You have to click this little man, click preferences. Here, choose orchestrator settings. There are two things to fill in. The first is orchestrator URL. That's the URL up till here, up till the word orchestrator. So let's put it in. And then the machine key and the machine key for our template. You can click this little icon to copy the machine key to clipboard or you send it anywhere and that's it. Now when I click connect, it should connect, right? And now the status is connected, that's cool. And it says unlicensed, which may seem like a bug or like an error, but don't worry. Why is it unlicensed? It's because there is no automation running right now because the license is consumed only at the moment where there is actually some process running. So the status is correct and it's fine. You can change some other things around there, but so far this will be the setup that you need to do. Also after this, uh, it's a really nice idea to reboot the virtual machine. I'm not using virtual machine, I'm using my laptop for the sake of demonstration, but where you have just installed this assistant, it's cool to reboot it. Okay, to create a robot, we actually need a robot user. So the robot users are being born back in the automation hub, back in admin. Accounts and groups. Robot accounts. Add robot account. Let's call it a robot Peter. All right, click add. And it's telling us that uh, we need to actually add it using manage access for each service. That means in the orchestrator in ten our tenant. I can click go to services. There is some shortcut, but I will show you where to go from the orchestrator itself. So let's go back to orchestrator. Let's go to tenant, manage access. So what we will do now is to invite this robot account from the cloud level, from the organization level inside this tenant. It works the same way for any kind of users. If you want to create a new user or invite somebody or create an account for somebody, you first go in the cloud administration and then you assign this user for each tenant. So I want to go to this place and click assign roles and it will be robot account. I need to choose my robot. So that was Peter, robot Peter. Okay, robot Peter. And I will give him a role of a robot. Don't think about it much. This will just work fine. Next, there's a robot setup, and this is important. There I need to provide the machine logging credentials in order to run some automation in an unattended way. So this is a place where you put in a username, a domain and username of an user, but it doesn't have to be a real person, right? So I will use I will put my details and it will work and it will go and log into the machine using these credentials. I will put just like a username that you use in uh, Windows and a password that you use to log in. If you don't know your domain or username, you can open command line, who am I? And this will give you exactly what you have to type in. So while you are on the virtual machine and you somehow logged in and you want to know these details to, to, to put it in, then you can get these details like this. These are Windows credentials, it's all correct. There could be some, there are some other options also. Click next. 
here you can do some other set setup, resolution, font smoothing, auto download process. And also interesting thing is to log into console. In case you have some connection problems, for some people this help to, to change the value. If you, if you will have problems, you can give it a try. Never mind, that's fine. Let's click assign, and this will assign our robot user to our tenant to production, right? If I will go to if I go to different tenant, it won't be there. Now we'll see robot Peter is there. Nice. So now if I go for a little while back to this flow chart, you can see that we created the robot account inside an organization. Then we assign it to a tenant. And now actually the next step will be to let the robot user in folder. In a folder, or it can go, of course, allowed to more than one folder. Also, as a next step, we will assign the machine that we just created recently to a folder. And these will be the last steps. So let's go back. To set up the folders, you stay in the tenant, click folders, and you are here in the setup of folders. I will be using the folder share that's always there by default. You can create any kind of folders you want. You can create subfolders. It's really scalable. So first, we want to invite the robot user to be able to run processes from this folder. So let's click assign account slash group, choose our robot Peter, give him the same roles. I mean, you can, you can choose different roles in the tenant level and in the folder level if you wish, but let's keep it also a robot. And there you go, there's a robot Peter. So now the robot is there. And the next step is to assign the machine we created recently. So we click machines, click manage machines in folders and tick the machine template, update, and ta-da, there we go. Now I can run automation, I can run processes on the machine inside the folder shared. So maybe as a last step, and but it's probably you know, you can go ahead to the folder, processes, and there is a process that's doing nothing. And if I click play, start a job, it will give me already the option to choose the robot Peter and choose the machine from the production machines. Eventually now this will choose if there will be more connected machines. If you will do the same setup with UI path assistant on another machine, you can choose from the machines or if there will be more of them and only some will be connected, it will automatically choose runtime that will have uh, if there will be also available license. But I don't want to go super deep into it. So you can choose this one and just click start and this would start it. If you will have any problems, try to see the errors and try to troubleshoot using UiPath Forum. I showed you most of the way. If there will be some small little details, then I guess you will find out. By the way, if you will try to replicate this on your desktop, like I did, and you will struggle that it's not really working as it should be, then also it could be maybe because of that it's a desktop. You will be less likely having an error on a virtual machine. By the way, now you can go to tenant and robots, and you can see that part of configured robots, uh, robot Peter, there is an unattended session that is green and connected, which is saying my host name and the machine template in which it lies. If there will be more machines connected to the template, there will be more of them, and you can see if they are connected, what version they are, and so on. So don't worry, keep exploring Orchestrator. It's an interesting place, a little bit confusing, a little bit complicated, but I think you will uh, find a way. And of course, keep updated with the newest updates from UiPath. That's probably the best way to do. When you will be already knowing this process by almost a memory, you can use this cheat sheet and you can download it from the first link under the video description. If you will have any questions, and I guess you will have, and please ask them, post them under the video in the comments. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. I hope your robots will be working fine. There are other videos from RPA Fridays that you can explore. And of course, you can sign up to our mailing list so you won't miss any new videos. So thank you for watching. See you next time. And I wish you happy automation.